Hello and welcome to the Car Care Nut channel. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to replace your Toyota transmission fluid if your transmission does not have a dipstick or it's a sealed transmission. Now, the car we will be using today is a 2016 Toyota Camry 4-cylinder. However, this video also applies to your Toyota Corolla CVT transmission and also the new 8-speed transmission. There are a few exceptions, there are a few additional steps that are needed for some of these cars. So make sure you watch this video in its entirety. At the end of the video, I'll mention some of the exceptions and the different cases. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel, hit the thumbs up, and let's dig right into this. So right before we get into the procedure, I want to give you a little overview of how this transmission design is. Now the official name is overflow type transmission, or most people refer to it as the sealed transmission. Now as you will find out later, there's nothing sealed about this transmission. Um, it is basically a dipstick-less transmission. The dipstick is actually flipped upside down and put where the drain plug is, as you'll find out later. I'm not gonna get too technical, I'm just gonna tell you this. Transmission fluid, when it's cold, it shrinks, just like any fluid, when it warms up, it takes up more space as it expands. We need in this transmission to get the fluid to a specific temperature. So as you see in this picture, here's the oil pan and here's the overflow tube. I'm going to put it in green because actually it is green in most cases on Toyota cars. Now, when the transmission reaches that exact temperature, just so happens that the fluid rises and becomes even with that too. As you can see in this picture, now we got the transmission fluid there, it's going to get even with that too. When that happens, the excess transmission fluid will drain through that tube and now you know you're at the exact level. If you let the transmission get too hot, now the fluid level will rise up and now you get an incorrect level. When the transmission is too cold, the fluid will be lower than that tube and now you could be adding more fluid to get it to, that, to the edge of the tube and you also get an incorrect level. So that's the basic idea. The most important thing is you have to get the fluid at the exact temperature. Now, every transmission will vary a little bit, but most of them are between 95 and 110 degrees. You can either use a temperature gun to see how hot is that pan at a specific spot, which we will talk about later in the video, or there's an, another procedure, or of course, you can use a scan tool and look at the temperature number. So having said that, now you got a basic idea of how this is gonna work. Let's go into the steps on how to do this on the actual car. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is lift up the car off the ground. We need to lift all four corners off the ground or do it on the ground, which I don't recommend because it's a little tight. Now I'm going to be using my quick jack lift. However, if you don't have a quick jack, you're going to be using jack stands. I recommend you lift all four corners of the car, put the car on four jack stands. The car must be level for the transmission fluid level check that we're going to do later to be accurate and correct. So without further ado, let's lift up the car and get to step two. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this wheel. This is the driver's side front wheel. After the wheel is gone, we're going to remove this cover, so let's go on showing you how to do that. We're going to remove this cover, which is called the apron cover. It has two 10 millimeter bolts and a clip that is hidden behind here. Let's remove the bolts and work on the clip. All right, with the bolts gone, there's a clip all the way at the back. It's kind of hard to film, so I'm going to take the clip and then show you the clip so you know how to take it off. You basically have to peel this back a little bit, the fender liner, and then get to it. Here's how the clip looks like. You're basically going to push it with a 90 degree pick or a screwdriver if you can get one in there. Once the middle goes in, pop the clip out. When you go to put it back together, you're going to push it like so 
put the clip in, then push this straight and it's locked. Once the cover is removed, I want you to watch this bolt right here. That's gonna be your fill plug right here. All right, so now we're underneath the car. This is your drain plug. You're gonna need a drain pan. Put it underneath the drain plug. Get a six millimeter hex. Take out the drain plug. Once you take out the drain plug, some fluid will come out. Now what you're going to do is, that is not an actual drain plug, there's another tube in there. You're going to use your same 6 millimeter hex, you're going to go back in the hole. And this is not very tight, it should be by hand. You're going to take the overflow tube. Now once you get this tube out, there's going to be a lot of fluid that's going to come down, so be ready for it. And here's your tube. Now you're going to let the fluid drain. The longer you keep, you let it drain, the better in this case you get all every single last drop of fluid out. So now that we're done draining, we're going to reinstall our tube. Now this tube just threads in there. And you do not need to over tighten it. You're just gonna tighten it until it stops. Then you're done. Do not over tighten this tube because you could crack it or make the level adjustment inaccurate. We'll talk about that in, in a little bit. Just like so. After that, you're gonna install your drain plug. And at this point, we're not gonna tighten the drain plug. We're just gonna install it all the way and just leave it like that. So now that we've drained the fluid, I bought this container from Home Depot. So this is readily available. It just has a scale and quartz. We're gonna pour the fluid that we drained into here to measure how much we got. So we know how much we're gonna add initially. So let me do that real quick and see how much we drained out of the car. So it looks like here, we drained right about two and a half quarts. Now here's a top tip for you. When you go and add this to the car, you're gonna add an additional half a quart. We always want the trans to run better overfilled a little bit than underfilled on the initial startup. We're gonna adjust the fluid, so whatever extra fluid that we put in, we're gonna take out. But I'd rather start it again overfilled than underfilled. So now we're going to get ready to start adding the new fluid. Now that we've measured how much we need, we're going to need three quarts. Like I said, two and a half plus a half. So this is a pump I buy from a local parts store. I'm going to leave a link for it so you know which one it is. Here's a picture of that close up. Um, this basically will screw on the bottle, the original bottle, and we'll be able to easily pour the fluid in. So now we're going to take the fill plug this is a 24 millimeter bolt let's take it out real quick now let's add our transmission fluid so now we're going to move on to the fluid adjustment procedure there are three ways to do this first one is obviously the easy one if you have a scan tool that is able to show the temperature of the transmission that's probably the easiest way, but it's no surprise that nobody has the scan tool, that expensive scan tool. So the second way is, which is an official procedure, which we will go into in a second. The third way is we use a temperature gun. Now, every transmission will have a specific temperature that you need to check the fluid at. This is the area where you need to be pointing your temperature gun on the transmission oil pan. Let's focus right now on the second method, which is gonna utilize the drive light when the drive light is off, that means your temperature is too low. When the drive light comes on solid, that means your temperature is good. When the drive light starts blinking, that means your temperature is too high. You need to shut off the car and let it cool down. Now the procedure to do that, 
first with the car off you're gonna place a small jumper wire like this one and these two pins on your OBD2 connector most of the OBD2 connectors are located under the dash in the driver's footwell. It's very simple. You just got to be careful that you're putting the wire in the right two terminals. Here's that picture one more time. Now, after you have placed that jumper, you're going to turn on your key. You're going to notice that there is a lot of warning lights that are flashing. That's normal. That indicates you're in diagnosis mode. Now, once you've done that, you're going to start, you're going to want to put your foot on the brake hold it on the brake don't let it go start the car and then you're going to move your shifter from park to drive then back to park a couple of times put it in reverse put it in drive that is to cycle the fluid through the transmission first before we start checking now once you've done that you need to be a little bit quick about this because the fluid temperature rises pretty quickly you're going to while looking at your drive indicator, you're going to move your, your selector to drive neutral, drive neutral. Keep doing that very quickly while holding the brake pedal until you notice your drive indicator comes on solid. I didn't want to do this with the car running because we only have a little amount of time from between when you do this and when the transmission reaches the fluid temperature needed to adjust the fluid. So. Let me, let me do that so you can see how the drive light comes on and we'll go under the car and adjust the fluid. So now starting the fluid procedure, I have a helper sitting in the car, doing the, the back and forth, going neutral drive, neutral drive, neutral drive, until that light stays on solid. Once the light turns on solid on the dash, you're going to take the drain plug out, and you're going to let the fluid drain. When the fluid turns into a trickle, which I will show you, that's when you put your drain plug back, you are at the correct level at that point. Right now it's a steady flow, that's the excess that we put on earlier, so we would, we would have a safety net. Now we're going to wait for it to, to get to a trickle. Here's that trickle that I'm talking about. Once you see it do this, put your brain block back on, tighten it, and you're all set. So now that we're all done with that, the fluid is set, the level is set, you have no worries about that. Make sure you tighten the drain plug. Make sure you tighten the fill plug. Reinstall the apron cover, reinstall the wheel, and clean up everything, and you're all set. I will say a few things. Make sure you take the car for a good test drive. And as a recommendation, if, and if you're doing this yourself at home, allow three to five days, maybe a week, maybe even two, and then bring the car back in your garage, do the same thing. Don't change the fluid again. Only do the transmission fluid level check just to be on the safe side, to be make sure everything is perfect. One more thing, as a recommendation, you always want to do this job when the car has sat overnight. It gives you a lot more room for the transmission not to warm up too quick on you and now you're above the temperature and now you gotta let it cool down. And trust me, these transmissions, they take forever to cool down. Another thing is, we're gonna talk briefly about the eight speed transmission on some of the newer stuff. Now there is a little cooler bypass that you have to push, just like you see in this picture. You have to push the pin, install an Allen key to hold it in place. You have to do that on the new HP transmission before you start anything. 
and then also some model tundras and sequoias also will have that on the right side of the transmission you also have to lock this this bypass opens the cooler so you can have the correct amount of fluid circulating through the whole system Another thing about the CVT transmissions on the Corollas, IMs, and other models, it's the exact same procedure, but make sure you use the right fluid. I will link below to a video that I made on different transmission fluids so you can review those so you know which, which transmission fluid your car takes and which is the correct one. Take your time with this procedure. Don't rush it. Make sure you watch this video once, twice, as many as you need so you can get everything correct. This is essential that you get the level right. Everything else is simple, but setting the level is very, very important. Now, if you're decided to use the temperature gun method, make sure you leave a comment or you're welcome to email me at thecarcarenet at gmail.com. I will happily provide the temperature range. Most cars are between 95 degrees and 110. However, this is not a guessing game you have to be very accurate about your fluid levels and fluid temperature when you set it this is this is the part that everyone gets wrong and ends up with problems so ask any questions you have leave them in the comments you're welcome to email me i'll be more than happy to help you with any questions you have and if you haven't done so already please consider subscribing to the channel leave a comment below put the thumbs up follow the channel on instagram and facebook may the lord bless you and keep you and I wish you the best with your Toyota. You have a wonderful day.